Days of the New is a band that truly had so much potential. Their 1997 self-titled debut saw great success, led by its lead single, Touch, Peel, and Stand. Frontman Travis Meeks was the sole songwriter of the group, really bringing the songs to life. His powerful voice and exceptional guitar skills never fail to amaze. It's even more amazing when you consider Travis was only 18 when his band took off. Yet, with as much talent as he possessed, Inner Demon stalled out his music career. He ended up going down a road of drug abuse, which led to an appearance on Intervention. Following his time on the show, things have been pretty silent. Days of the News' last album was released in 2001, and no solo stuff ever materialized. In the mid-2000s, Travis began working on new material for Days of the New, but nothing has ever been officially released. A brief reunion of the band's original lineup took place in 2014, which was straight-up disastrous. Days of the New were opening for Metallica back in the late 90s. Now the band is a relic of a time long gone, unfortunately due to Travis's addiction. Let's get into the rise and fall of the band, starting with the early years, their rapid rise to fame, and eventual downfall. Travis Meeks was born in Charleston, Indiana, and grew up in a very musical family. His dad was a musician, which led to Travis taking up the guitar. By the age of 11, he was already writing songs on his electric. Eventually, Travis found his calling playing acoustically. He became one with a guitar, finding himself creatively in the most intimate and authentic way possible. In conjunction with his passion for playing music, drugs started coming into the picture. He used an abundance of psychedelics from 11 to 15 and began having psychotic episodes. This period of insanity led to Travis forming the metal band Dead Reckoning. This band wouldn't last long and very quickly became Days of the New. Every member of Dead Reckoning aside from one remained on board. Travis Meeks had a vision, wanting a sound that was stripped down and honest. Playing heavy metal just didn't appeal to him much anymore. Days of the New was officially formed in Indiana in 1995. A short time later, the band relocated to Louisville, Kentucky. This is where the ball really got rolling. At the time, the lineup of the band consisted of guitarist and vocalist Travis Meeks, bassist Jesse Vest, and drummer Matt Tall. A bit later, guitarist Todd Whitener joined as well. This lineup was the most consistent of the band's life, remaining for over three years. It was very clear early on, Travis was the leader of the band. He had a vision and his own way of operating which couldn't be swayed by anybody. He spent copious amounts of time obsessively honing his craft. It would be determined years later, Travis is actually autistic. He deals with a milder form known as Asperger's. So with this knowledge, some of his behavior makes more sense in hindsight. Anyway, this leads us to the band's first album, which began coming to life in 1996. While writing songs for the first album, Travis was only 15 to 16 years old. It's honestly crazy just how much talent he had so young. That's what makes his story so depressing. He had buckets and buckets of potential that very few artists possess in a lifetime. But it makes sense, Travis is a deep individual. His autism enabled him to have laser beam focus and really explore deep within himself. The songs of the self-titled debut came together in solitude. Travis had a four-track and recorded much of the album in his bedroom. Obviously, the songs would be beefed up by the band in the studio, but Travis had already written everything himself. The four-track recordings Travis laid down didn't turn many heads at first. That all changed after he performed at the Harvest Showcase in Kentucky. Label scouts in the crowd were impressed by what they heard, but it was Rick Smith in particular that set things in motion. Rick managed many huge rock bands over the years and had a lot of industry connections. So without hesitation, he sent Travis's demos to Scott Litt. Not long after, Days of the New was signed to Outpost Records, a label founded by Litt. He saw something in Travis, he knew he had real potential to be huge. Days of the New's debut album was recorded at Woodland Studios in Nashville from October to November 1996. When the album was released in June 97, it made the band a sensation almost overnight. Its lead single, Touch, Peel, and Stand, became an instant radio hit, cementing them as the next big thing. The song topped the mainstream rock charts for 17 weeks, being performed on David Letterman by the end of that year. Touch, Peel, and Stand is the definitive Days of the New track. I guarantee you've heard the song on rock radio countless times. It was inescapable and still is to some degree. An extremely well-written, yet dark track that clearly took influence from the grunge bands of the early 90s. But it's not necessarily a knockoff, it has a unique sound of profound emotion. Two singles followed, being The Downtown and Shelf in the Room, both finding pretty good success. The Downtown in particular topped the mainstream rock charts in 1998. The self-titled debut by Days of the New would go platinum. It spawned three successful singles, with the first Touch, Peel, and Stand making the band an undeniable force. Travis and the gang found major success early on, but unfortunately, things get bumpy from here on out.
In the summer of 1998, Days of the New toured with Metallica and Jerry Cantrell. This opened so many doors for the band as they were still brand new. It was honestly a dream come true scenario. Very few teenagers find mainstream success with their band overnight and end up opening for Metallica. But Travis did it. For the first time in his life, his art was appreciated by a mass audience. However, a major change was coming. Shortly after the tour wrapped in late 98, Days of the New split up. It's been widely speculated Travis fired his bandmates, while others say they left. But in reality, it was mutually decided they should go their separate ways. Travis and the guys just didn't click anymore musically. They had totally different goals and ideas of success. It's really that simple. So Travis was now solo, while Jesse, Matt, and Todd would go on to form Tantric. Drummer Matt Tal would actually stick around for a bit, contributing to two songs Travis already wrote for the second album, but ultimately it didn't work out. In late 98, going into early 99, Travis Meeks was writing the second days of the new record. Once again, he wrote everything himself, just like the first album. Days of the New was Travis's vision, nobody else's. But he did need a band behind him in the studio and for touring. So this is when the second coming of the band emerged. Travis hired six musicians to contribute to the Green Album. Pre-Pussycat Dolls, Nicole Scherzinger on backing vocals, Brian Vincent on bass, Doug Florio and Craig Wagner on guitar, Kimmick Cantwell on keyboards, and Ray Rizzo on drums. There were others as well, notably an entire orchestra and choir which can be heard on the album. Green was recorded mostly at Travis's studio, Distillery Sound, in Louisville, Kentucky. He took a much more epic approach this time around, exploring different sounds and experimenting quite a bit. It's not completely foreign coming off the debut, but it's obviously a much more ambitious album. He had big ideas and a clear vision. The first single of Green was released in July 1999, entitled Enemy. It did well, peaking at number 2 on the mainstream rock charts. Everything was pointing toward the album being a hit, but that didn't really happen. When the Green Album was released in August 1999, it sold poorly compared to the debut. The second single, Weapon in the Wound, released in 2000, did well, all things considered, but overall, Green didn't do that great. The album was more well-received critically, however, that didn't really translate to sales. Shortly after the Green Album tour in late 99, Travis developed a kidney stone. He got hooked on painkillers, which unfortunately led to years of self-medicating in a variety of ways. Going into the Red Album, Travis's self-destruction began to become apparent. By the time of Days of the New's third and final album, Travis was no longer in his right state of mind. Largely due to his use of painkillers, but he was also sick and tired of dealing with the music industry. Around this time, his label went under. Outpost Records was a subsidiary of Geffen Records, which was bought out by Interscope. So it was a weird transitional period, and Travis sort of fell through the cracks. All of a sudden, nobody around him supported his vision. It was a bunch of corporate businessmen that only wanted hits. They were trying to influence his sound and push him in different directions, which caused a great level of disillusion. Travis was a songwriting machine, so only months after the Green Album, he was once again ready to enter the studio, this time with a different lineup yet again. Drummer Ray Rizzo remained, while new bassist Mike Hutig was brought on board. Travis finished the record in the first half of 2000, but his label rejected it. He was forced to redo most, if not all, of the album, which made him very depressed. Travis is not the kind of person that would be okay with sacrificing his vision, but he didn't really have much of a choice. The next summer, in 2001, the alterations the label demanded were made, but by this point, Travis was starting to get really deep into drugs. Alcohol and cocaine were the go-to, while harder stuff was right around the corner. The Red Album was finally released in September 2001. In terms of sound, Red is largely in the same vein as Green. It rocks out while being very emotional and introspective. Travis sounds great, singing with such passion and conviction, just like the first two albums. His addiction was starting to become an issue, but musically, he was still on fire. Unfortunately, the album would underperform even worse than Green. I feel this was largely due to the 9-11 attacks being right around the time of its release. The lead single, Hang On To This, did moderately well on the rock charts, but it's safe to say Days of the News' mainstream reign was fading. That didn't really matter anymore, though. Travis Meeks was in trouble. Travis attempted a tour in support of the Red Album, but it didn't go well as his condition was quickly deteriorating. He would show up drunk and was generally just not the same person as before. Around 02 or 03, Travis would audition for Velvet Revolver, which didn't work out for obvious reasons. After this, he would spend years in hiding abusing drugs. He went from cocaine to crack to meth in a relatively short period of time. This leads us to his 2005 appearance on Intervention. 
You get really good insight into Travis's condition at the time. He wasn't very functional, but still retained his passion for music. Watching the episode, it's a really sad sight to see. Travis was very deep into addiction. He left the intervention and yelled at his girlfriend, but in the end agreed to treatment and went to a facility in Utah. When the episode concluded, Travis had been clean for over two months, but unfortunately this didn't last. The timeline from this point on is hazy and unclear. It seems from 2005 and onward, he spent some periods sober but could never fully kick his habit. But what is known is he started work on the fourth days of the new album in the early to mid-2000s. This album has been deemed purple and a number of songs have leaked over the years. However, nothing official has ever come to fruition. Maybe due to all the bridges Travis burned during the height of his addiction. Labels simply don't want to work with someone who's flaky and unreliable, which Travis definitely was. I'm not going to talk much about the Purple album, because everything that's out there is pretty much just early versions of what could have been. But even to this day, longtime fans are still hankering for an actual release, which sadly we may never receive. There's also Tree Colors, which would be the fifth days of the new album. Also unlikely to see an official release, but we'll see. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, Travis got back out there playing quite a few shows, but by this point, his reputation was tarnished. He became known for showing up late or not at all, along with the fact he'd often be too inebriated to deliver a good performance. In the summer of 2014, Travis decided to bring back the original lineup of Days of the New for a reunion tour. This entire ordeal was nothing short of a disaster. Issues stemming from the late 90s resurfaced, and there was clear tension between Travis and the band. Once again, there were shows Travis would fail to show up for, and it was obvious he was still in the throes of addiction. One show in particular taking place on September 6, 2014 was especially troubled. Here's a quote from one of the original Days of the New members posted on Facebook. There are many things to address here, and we don't want to keep feeding the negativity. We do want to let it be clear that Travis was in no way pressured into this reunion. In fact, it was very much the other way around. Travis literally begged us to do this tour, on the phone, in text, and in person. He had burned so many bridges in his career that no one would hire him to play a show anymore for fear that he would not show up. This reunion tour could have been Travis's entry back into the music industry, a second chance to rebuild himself, but it ended poorly with so many needless issues. Unfortunately, it only gets worse. In late 2014, Travis was arrested for failing to appear in court. He was arrested again three years later in June 2017, this time for burglary, evading the police, public intoxication, and possession of a controlled substance. He was arrested three more times that year, twice in 2018 and once in 2019. This is all public information found on KentuckyArrest.org. Finally, he was arrested once again in 2020. Things have been pretty silent ever since. Coming across Travis's page on Facebook, he seems to be in a better place, which is great to see, but still, to say Travis hit rock bottom is beyond an understatement. Days of the News' last official show was apparently in January 2015, according to ConcertArchives.org. Travis's last solo show was in 2018. Who knows what the future holds for Travis or for Days of the New in general. He could make an epic comeback and release the Purple Album and Tree Colors like nothing ever happened, or nothing will happen at all. Either way, Travis Meeks is an extremely talented dude, you can't deny that. He had a meteoric rise in the late 90s, but unfortunately fell from grace harder than anybody I can think of. It's honestly a miracle he's still with us. I'm genuinely rooting for Travis to make a comeback. I know tens of thousands of fans are patiently waiting. It's been said that Travis is indeed clean now, which is amazing and has given longtime fans hope. It's an incredibly hard path to sobriety after abusing drugs for so long. Conquering that addiction alone deserves immense respect. Even if Travis never makes a return, we can only hope he's at least living a healthy and productive life. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite Days of the New song? Comment down below. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Take care.